Welcome to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today we're taking a look at the Pathless from Annapurna Interactive for the Nintendo Switch, an open world action adventure experience it originally released on the PS5, PS4 and Apple Arcade. Now how is this port? Let's find out. If you do find content like this useful, we have reviews and deals daily. Consider subscribing, helps the channel a huge amount. The story then, and we're taking on the role of the hunter, a master archer who travels to this mystical island to remove a curse. While doing this, we will forge a bond with an eagle companion. They definitely become now integral to our success. This journey, it will have us so freeing this land from corrupted souls, and the story, it's delivered with brief voiceover sequences that connect the many parts of this land. We can also then find victims of the curse scattered around. They have blue souls which add further context through a text format. I do like the story overall, it's minimal, but it keeps you intrigued. Gameplay then under this one, it's an open world experience that has you lighting beacons scattered around a variety of landscapes, or to take down the aforementioned corrupted souls. These are represented on screen by big red clouds that occasionally do attack, but the beacons, these towers, it will basically pinpoint the location of this evil and then we can proceed to attack. If I had to make comparisons here, this is the game Windbound wanted to be, and then there's also an air of Breath of the Wild in here, thanks to its puzzle design and exploration. This though is a game that then relies on its fluidity to truly impress and first time around the day I got it on PS5 I adored it and that statement very much stands true to this day. The movement is simple, we can choose direction of course, we can control the camera as well although it will follow and then we will see many targets scattered around and known as idols. If you shoot one of these with our bow we do get a speed boost. It also tops up however our stamina which is across the bottom of the screen. This game it's all about moving quick and firing quicker because this stamina it depletes extremely quickly and no one wants to simply walk so you've always got to be strategizing around where that next idol is. We can also then jump and our eagle gives us the ability to glide and eventually fly higher. Progression then leads to improvements on how many times we can boost upwards with our eagle companion. It's just been designed really well to reward curiosity, you know, rarely does the game tell you what you need to do, rather it establishes a simple loop that's present pretty much for the majority of the game and that is light up these different towers that allows you to move forward, the rest then is now going to be up to you. The only real direction the game contains is a mask that you do pick up in the opening moments. You can put this on and it's going to allow you to see the locations of perhaps different puzzles, different collectibles, maybe even just location secrets. One of the collectibles, for example, it allows you to level up your eagle, so those are definitely worth keeping an eye out for too. The puzzles then, they're well designed, with them often demanding use of both the character or lead from the bow to the eagle that can pick up items and carry them behind you. With all of this exploration then, what are the threats? What do we battle with this trusty bow? Well, very little, honestly. The corrupted souls are the only enemy and the aiming here is automatic. Sure, look, there's boss encounters, but I wouldn't consider them particularly high stakes. The bow is a weapon to essentially move for the most part. The only other threats that do occur, the red mist it can attack, as I said, and when it does, our winged friend gets hurt and we must stealthily move our way back towards them. Get hit, you lose some collectibles, you find them and the mist will essentially disappear. These are okay, definitely slower pace moments where you simply keep out of the light or stop moving and yeah, gotta be honest, they got a little old towards the end game, but they do provide some needed tension. You can't die in this game as well, that is worth knowing, but the game still needed something, and for the most part I would say this kind of fulfills that. Your eagle in these moments will, as I said, be injured as well, so you'll need to pet them back to health so you can fly and glide again. Boss encounters then, and these are great, they typically start with a chase sequence where you must avoid incoming projectiles while sprinting all over the place. Then we'll get into a more traditional experience. Targeting, as I've mentioned, it is automatic, so do not expect all-out war here. It's more a case of learning the attack pattern 
a fighting and I think incoming and then waiting for an opening. Each boss essentially has a select number of weak spots that we must strike to take them down. They definitely bring at least some nice variety with progression though and they feel intense which is exactly what you want. Performance then will be the big factor in this one I was nervous going in. I know it's a large location, some of the visual effects definitely dial things up. That said, it's also a game that's defined by, you know, its fluidity in movement. For me, this release, it does enough, but it's not without its problems. The game seems to be pushing above 30 right now, a large portion of the opening, like say half at least, it's going for that kind of 30 to 40 range, and I'd say it's pretty stable throughout the entire experience. It's not locked basically, but it feels incredibly responsive. This does not consistently hold up however, occasionally you'll hit moments with dramatic drops to reveal at the main world in the opening moments, and then throughout the game you will notice, you know, more I guess less aggressive drops and stutters. Performance, it's basically far from perfect, but what does that mean for my opinion on this game? I think it's fine honestly, it's clearly a demanding experience and I think they've succeeded in a lot of ways. Sure, I would have liked Locked of course, but the stutters and the drops, I can handle them because again, there's very little in the way of combat and all the targeting, it's completely automatic. Now if I had full control of my bow, this would probably be a very different story. The Pathless for gameplay, it's a pretty low stakes action adventure that's going to last you right around 6 hours. I enjoy the world a lot personally and while I would have preferred maybe a dash more in the way of, I guess, intensity. I do think it's a unique experience that rewards curiosity. And this team, the same ones behind Absu, that seems to be basically what they specialize in. They're just out here delivering some of the most unique experiences on any platform. Visually, it's okay. This port has seen a sizable downgrade from what you would find on the PlayStation build. You know, gone are many of the textures, the draw distance is slightly impacted, and naturally, we do face a resolution drop that becomes noticeable with the red mist effects in particular. That pixelation is so apparent. That all said though, I do think they've made a smart cut here. Grass, for example, may now be a simple flat green at a distance, but it allows us to keep the action flowing while playing still into the minimalistic design nature of the game. We also get enough draw distance and to see where we must go next, that's always going to be a concern. And our character's animations and eagle companion, absolutely fantastic. Overall, I still think it just packs a lot of charm as well. You know, a once populated location of red mist that pursues us that still looks incredible, especially as it takes over the screen. And then we're getting all of the ruins, the puzzles, and they all look for the most part great. It's gonna be easy to look at this one and disregard its style, but there's a lot more in here than initially meets the eye. Audio is stunning. The some are basic voiceovers, though not English, and particularly menacing. And I love our lead sound effects the sprinting, the bow and arrow, the eagle. The real highlight, though, it must be the music. This soundtrack is absolutely stunning. They've used a combination of traditional instrumentation that matches the almost tribal like design of this world, but then they've taken steps to blend it with a digital. It creates that mystical effect, mixing then some focal, some chance, and yet it goes to some absolute absolutely incredible places. This is an album as well, I do revisit occasionally outside of the game at Worlds. So the final verdict, the pathless on the Nintendo Switch may compromise this from the performance to the visuals, but I do think for all of the cutbacks they've made, they kept the soul of the experience alive. You know, the movement, for the most part, incredibly fluid and fast. The bow and arrow still feels satisfying. The eagle, a nice change of pace. Enemies, or I guess, the different souls, they can take over your screen in a split second, and then a world that is again designed for the curious. If you have the option of PlayStation or Xbox, absolutely go there unless handheld is essential, but it's still a game I would recommend on the system. Today, it's a good 7 out of 10 from me, and to give you an idea here, on PlayStation, it's more like an 8 out of 10. Will you be checking out the Pathless then? Let me know in the comments. With that, hit subscribe, but join us here for reviews and deals daily, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.